Hello, and welcome into Multiverse Videos Tech Tuesdays. Today I thought I'd do something that is a little bit more um, suitable for my uh, video style, and today we're going to do a uh, more along the lines of a traditional Techies World video. If you see my main channel, you'll know the kind of videos that I produce, aka crap. And uh, so um, I thought today um, we would take it a little bit easy and uh, we'll do a bit more of a traditional video for me. And I uh, hope you enjoy. Okay, so we're going to do something a little bit more toward my video style. And uh, this is basically how I do the Techies World videos. If you ever watch my main channel, this is basically what they look like. And um, I thought I'd give you a little preview of that this week and um, we'll do something a little bit more traditional toward my style and today we're going to talk about the iBook G3 clamshell. We're not technically going to be talking about it but um, anyway if you haven't seen the uh, video on my main channel to this um, which um, maybe our producer can maybe add a link to that video um, somewhere maybe in this video or somewhere um, down below um, you know uh, so that way you can see the video on this if you haven't seen it this is the clamshell that um, I got from the computer store that I used to work at and uh, this was given to me um, someone brought it in they wanted the hard drive from it they didn't want the machine and uh, so I took the machine apart and I got the hard drive out and because the computer is too old to do anything with um, it was headed toward uh, this machine was actually headed toward um, the bin and um, I stopped them before they threw it in the bin and um, I asked if I could have it and they said yes and so I put it all back together and um, here it is uh, but um, you know I have done some work to this machine and um, I had to spend some money and buy some parts to get this machine working again um, one of the things you'll notice is the uh, Apple leaf up here in the Apple logo has fallen off that is very common the uh, uh, the leaf up there on the Apple logo falls off of these I mean it's very common for these things this is a original iBook clamshell there were four different colors and three different speeds of the clamshells and uh, the blueberry and tangerine were the first two original models this is a tangerine obviously and um, this actually had a whole bunch of innovative features in it one of the most coolest I mean one of the most coolest things about it one of one of the coolest things about it not one of the most but one of the coolest features about it use proper English here uh, one of the coolest things about it is the clamshell design this is the most uniquely sold computer ever sold in the entire IT industry uh, there's never been a computer that is like this um, some people will look at this and they say it is ugly some people will look at it and say it's beautiful um, I am one of those people who thinks it's beautiful this is a very stylish and beautiful computer uh, some people will look at it and say you know it looks like a toilet seat and yes it does uh, the uh, actually the uh, nickname for these machines are the toilet seat laptops because they do look like a toilet seat um, but that notwithstanding these were some of the most innovative machines for their time you have to think the iBook clamshell came out in 1999 back in 99 a consumer laptop really wasn't possible and this was the first laptop that was really set out for consumers educators and students and Apple really targeted this hard in the consumer market and boy was it successful this in combination with the iMac not that iMac but the original Bondi Blue iMac that's actually a uh, Blueberry iMac but um, in combination with the iMac and the iBook this really helped propel Apple out of bankruptcy and uh, this helped turn around a company that was like 60 days away from bankruptcy back in 97 but uh, let's go ahead and open it up well before I open it up uh, let me finish about the uh, innovative first first off the design um, the uh, design of this was actually heavily based on the eMate and if anybody knows about Apple products you know that eMate was a portable um, notebook that was meant for uh, school use it was based on Apple's Newton platform and um, the Newton actually looked very similar to the clamshell and had some similar features and I think that's actually where the design actually came from so besides the clamshell design it had one feature that was I think just so awesome and that is this thing on the back it is called a handle and what you do with it is you open it up and you can lift the machine just like this and you can lift it up just like this and you can carry it with you there has been to my knowledge except for the e-mate there's really been no other machine in the industry sold with a handle and um, that was a big innovative first on this another innovative first is there's actually no latch 
Um, it works just like a flip phone. It just keeps it closed and stays closed. This also was the first um, commercially sold laptop to have Wi-Fi in it. There are two uh, Wi-Fi antennas in the screen. You, you can't see them, but they're kind of in this plastic part here. Um, there are two Wi-Fi antennas in the screen with the optional airport card that you could have bought for this and the airport base station. Um, you could have, and Apple really brought Wi-Fi to the masses with this machine. You have to think, back in 99, Wi-Fi was a new thing. It was, it was A, complicated to use, and it was B, expensive. And Apple um, worked with, I forgot the company name, but uh, maybe somebody who is you know who knows that could drop the you know could drop the name in the comments because because I don't remember the company name, but they work with them to develop Airport, and um, it combined Apple's ease of use technology with whoever the company was. I forgot who it was. I should look this up, but um, but anyway, it, you know it combined their Wi-Fi technology with Apple's ease of use technology to bring the cost down to a more feasible level. And uh, Wi-Fi really took off with this machine. So one of the things you probably noticed when I opened it here is something is a little bit different, and that is the top case. This machine needed a new top case because the trackpad didn't work, and so I had to put a new top case on here. And um, anybody who knows about these machines knows that these are collector's items. They're getting hard to find. The value on these machines are going sky high. Um, you know, there's nowhere else but up for the prices on these machines to go, and they keep going up. And um, finding color matching parts for these are difficult if not darn near impossible so what I had to do is uh, this is the top case off a of blueberry model and also the keyboard is a bit different the keyboard um, originally came from a blueberry model as well notice the blueberry um, uh, you know wording right there on the keys you'll notice how it's in blueberry and not uh, tangerine but again one of the good things about the clamshells there was no major chassis ma uh, changes made to the iBook the whole time you know it was in production you could take parts off all the different colored iMacs and put them all together to create a multicolored iBook and unfortunately when you need to buy parts that's what you need to do I also had to buy a new optical drive you can't tell because I took the bezel off but the optical drive in this had failed so I had to put a new optical drive in new top case new keyboard um, and I had to stick a new hard drive in it as well. And uh, the hard drive I have in here is a 10 gig, I think. And it's running a load of OS 10, 10.1 Puma. So let's go ahead and boot it up. And let's actually go ahead and plug in power. So let me set the camera down for a minute. The power adapter that goes to these machines is really, really unique. Um, this also was kind of a innovative kind of thing. This is the, the uh, power supply that goes to the clamshell, and it looks like a hockey puck or a saucer. Um, this is what Apple calls the yo-yo power supply because it looks like a giant yo-yo. I mean, doesn't it? I mean, it looks like a big, gigantic yo-yo. And um, this was Apple's yo-yo power supply, which originally came with these machines. I had to buy that. Um, luckily, you can still buy these things on eBay, and uh, that's what I did. And just as a noteworthy... Thing. There's actually two different versions of the um, Yo-Yo power supply. There's this style here that goes to the clamshell iBooks and, and the um, uh, G3 power books. The other version had a black cable and a black barrel and was smaller than this. That goes to the G3 and G4 iBooks as well as the G4 power books. Um, so there's two different versions of this and it's important because you need to get the right one because the power supplies are not interchangeable. This is normal for this machine. We sit here on the screen for about two minutes. The hard drive isn't um, recognized for about two minutes. Um, I'm thinking that's probably a hard drive problem. I'm probably going to have to put a new drive in it. Let me set the camera back down. Uh, the hard drive I put in here was a well-used hard drive that came off of a PowerBook G4. Uh, not aluminum, but titanium G4, which was the first PowerBook G4. And um, I think that hard drive has got issues because I put it because I put a other hard drive in here when I first put this machine together, and um, and it didn't do it. So I think this machine probably has it's probably got a bad it's probably got a bad hard drive. I'm probably going to have to replace it. Notice the indicator light there. It's actually on the machine. The um, uh, the uh, battery um, charging light is actually on the machine itself. It's not integrated into the power adapter. It's not like the ones, it's not like MagSafe where it's actually integrated on the power adapter. It's um, got the flying toasters. Woohoo! 
Uh, you know, it's not like, um, you know, the ones on MagSafe where it's integrated into the connector, it's uh, integrated into the machine. And here we go, we're going to start booting finally. The early versions of OS X actually did um, use the Happy Mac icon like you've seen in the previous versions of Mac OS. Um, that was changed in 10.2 Jaguar. It was changed to the Apple logo with a uh, with a gray screen. Um, so here we go. We're loading into um, this. Actually, is a, a early versions of of OS 10. This is 10.1. This was the second version of OS 10 to be released. Um, technically, it's the third if you really want to think about it, because the first version of OS 10 that came out was 10. Dots, uh, was OS 10 public beta, which was the very first version of OS 10 that was released for the public and then the official release was 10.0 which was codenamed uh, Jag which was a uh, codename Cheetah and then 10.1 was Puma so technically this is the second revision to the finalized OS but in terms of the public releases it's actually the third and we're booting up here into OS 10 here this machine I believe has 192 megs of RAM in it I think the maximum this computer can take is 512 I think. I'm not 100% certain. Um, this machine originally would have had 64 megabytes of RAM soldered onto the logic board. And there's, I think, what do we have in here? Let's do about this Mac real quick. I'm almost certain this has 192 on it. Yes, 192 megs on a G3, version 10.1.4. That's the newest version of Puma. Um, let's see. These machines are practically useless for today's world. Um, there's not a whole lot you can do with these things. Um, internet usage. I do have an airport card in here. As you see right there, we do have uh, Wi-Fi status. In fact, I'll show you that here. The keyboard, we've got two tabs on the uh, keyboard. And we'll lift that. Uh, the airport card is right there. That's the um, original 802.11b airport card. The hard drive actually lives right here underneath the shielding. But in order to get to that, you have to disassemble the entire machine. And when I mean disassemble the entire machine, I mean disassemble the entire machine. Um, you know, it's not like, you know, the other MacBook Pro over here, or not like this one where it's easy to get into. You have to disassemble the machine completely in order to get to the hard drive on these machines. They're a real pain in the rear end, but, you know, they're not that bad. So um, let's go around and take a look at what it has for ports. You have a wonderful assortment of ports, I do believe. Here we have, I'll set the camera down, it'll be easier for you to see this here. This jack right here, well there's no jack in it now because I took it out, but this is actually the modem. Um, the reason the jack is missing is because you have to take the jack out in order to replace the hard drive. So. Ultimately, I took the whole modem and the jack out, and I never put it back in. You know, this is 2016. There's no reason for that to be in there. We have a uh, 10100 Ethernet jack, one USB 1.1 port, and a headphone jack. That's all the ports you got in 1999. In um, the later revisions to the clamshell, the Indigo... Um, Keylime and Graphite models, the later revisions did ultimately incorporate Firewire, um, or 1394, as some of you PC people will know it as. Um, but the early models, but, but you know, the first models didn't have Firewire, um, which is a bit interesting because, well, yeah, Firewire was around back then, but um, I guess Apple didn't want it on their consumer machine. Um, so, um, yeah, like I said, these things are basically useless in today's world, which is a shame because I don't really use this machine for anything but really nostalgia, so there's really no reason to put a newer OS on it. Uh, these machines originally would have shipped with OS 8.6, I believe. Um, the later models would have had OS 9, but I believe 8.6 was the original OS to the first clamshell models cause, because I don't think 9 was out yet. Um, Mavis Beacon actually runs quite well on these, and um, I guess we'll show you that. This is an older version of Mavis Beacon. I don't uh, know which version number it is. It's Mavis Beacon teaches typing 17. It's an old version, I know that. Welcome to class sign in. And to um, the user to start the registration process. You see my name, so let's go ahead and already I gotta move the doc out of my way. So let's do that. Turn the hiding on because it's in the way. Let's do um, begin. Welcome to typing class. I'm your teacher, Mavis Deacon. 
and um oh that's right there is no oh that's right there <laughs> forgot where the mute button was um actually one of the cool things about mavis beacon is actually i used uh mavis beacon when i was in middle school in middle school we used to have a class called computers and it was a class that that ultimately everybody had to take and basically in this class all we were learning is typing skills and how to do word documents and things like that um, it was kind of like um, you know improving your computer literacy kind of that's kind of like what the you know what the class was uh, so technically that is what the what the class was and this is what we used was Mavis Beacon I think we used a newer version though of Mavis Beacon ultimately they ultimately left Mavis Beacon in favor of Type to Learn. And I would like to get a copy of Type to Learn. I just can't find the copy that we used to have, and I can't find it. So um, uh, that's ultimately the... Uh, so that's how I got started with Mavis Beacon, because we used to use it in school. And uh, they ultimately went to Type to Learn later on. But um, let's see. Let's do a practice area here. And we'll do, I don't know, let's do astronomy. Mavis Beacon really is a great way to learn how to type. As you see here, you get a on-screen keyboard. And basically, this is uh, live with, with your type movements. And also notice the hands here. This shows you where you should be placing your fingers on the keyboard. Um, that's technically the correct way to do it. But not everybody... You, types this way I don't anyway um, you know you know I type with both hands but you know I don't ever I don't think my my hands are ever in this position um, I don't think anybody types this way that's just the recommended way of typing you also got a word count right here and then basically in this session this is one of the practice sessions and what you do here is you just basically copy what all this says and you just try to repeat what it says and uh, you try to um, you know type out what it says and uh, you know you get your score down here and all that stuff so let's go ahead and just give this a try just for fun uh, let me go ahead because I need both hands to do this so let's see let me try to set the camera up and uh, we'll continue on okay so I've got the camera set up I don't know if you can see the screen very well but um, you know this is just you know what you can expect from the techies world I'm telling you so um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this little practice assignment here in Mavis Beacon and uh, what it's asking is to type the word asteroids so let's go ahead and uh, do a little typing session on it. And one of the things you should notice, and especially I show you this here, how if you type a word wrong, it will actually outline it. When it's blue, it's correct. When it's red, that means it isn't correct. So you get kind of an idea as into, you know, what you're doing. So let's go ahead and uh, type this out here. And we can, we can also do a backspace. We can actually clear out any mistakes that we actually made. This is all in caps. So I'm going to hit the caps lock key. And then I need to hit the enter button. That'll create that little squiggly line. Then I need to hit enter again. That'll create the squiggly line. And then we're going to type exactly what this says. So undo that. Oops. Yeah, I have... <laughs> I'm not used to this keyboard. I'm used to my MacBook Pro's keyboard. Uh, you know, I'm not used to these keyboards again. Um, oops. Yeah, you do get um, sound feedback when you type things wrong. You also get the. Um, you also get the words when it. So you know, it's like what I said. When it comes up in blue. That means it's correct. When it's red, that means it isn't correct. You made a mistake and you need to go back and fix it. Oops. Come on. Ugh. And again, probably one thing you're noticing as you're watching me, which I don't know, why are you watching me type this? I mean, you mustn't have anything better to do. <laughs> I mean, if you're watching some random guy on the internet type something on a keyboard. But uh, one thing you're probably noticing about me is um, 
I generally do type fast, but the problem with my typing is, um, you know, when I have to look at something and type it back, I generally hang a little bit because I constantly want to make sure I spell it right. But generally, if I'm like taking notes or something in class or I'm just, you know, writing an assignment or something, I can type pretty quick because it's coming from my brain. If it's coming from a screen or a book and I have to copy it, I type a little bit slower. Again, that may be just me. I may be just a mental case, so um, I don't know. But um, that's just me, so unless it's a word I'm positive I know how to spell, then I kind of take it a little bit slow to make sure I spell everything right. I think we'll stop there for this. Um, so again, you can see pretty much the way this works here. Um, again, you know, and you can't do that. There's no scrolling trackpad on there. But again, you know, you can see the way it works, you know, what it originally had and what you wrote is down here. And you know, if you make a mistake, you know, it does show up, you know, in red. And then, of course, the keyboard shows what you're striking. And then you can just um, delete that out. There's a whole bunch of different things that you can do with Mavis Beacon. Let's see, my word count is 12 words per minute. That's actually quite quite bad. <laughs> but uh, there's a whole bunch of different things. There's like a whole bunch of different um, projects and things you can do. Um, let's see if we can get into one. Let's go ahead and see if we can get into one here real quick. Okay, so Welcome here we are back on the home screen, and we're going to click on typing games here. Let's do a quick typing game here. Let me uh, mute this for a moment. Um, like I said, I used to use this in middle school, and I'm trying to remember which one I used to play all the time. I'm almost certain it was Road Race. I think that was the one I used to play all the time. Let's give Road Race a try here. Improve your typing speed. Road Race will help you with your speed. Okay, I, okay. Type the characters yeah. as they appear. I used to play this Don't one. Don't forget to work on accuracy. So, um... Let's go ahead and set the camera back up, and uh, let's go ahead and give this a try. Okay, so I've got the camera all set back up. Let's go ahead and give this game a try. Again, we're going to be trying Road Race here. And all you do is you just start typing to start the game. Oh, and you can see what it does, too, when you type a word wrong. I don't know if you see this. When you type a word wrong, you get that little bug splatter. Um, again, that's kind of the whole point. When you type a word wrong, it kind of gives you... a uh, bug splatter. I think it's been a while since I played this game, so, um, you know, it's all starting to, yeah, it's starting to come back to me. Ugh. I suck, don't I? <laughs> And um, I think the game ends when your screen gets covered in bugs. <laughs> I think. You know, it's been a while since I've played this game. Because I used to play this game a lot when I was in school. Um, so maybe we did use this version. I don't remember. It's been a long time <laughs> since I was in uh, middle school. I was in middle school like in 2005. That was when I started fifth grade. So um, I don't remember a lot of things from fifth grade. But... I don't know, we might have used this version. I don't quite, quite remember. And, um, you know, this is just... Um, again, when the game ends, you get that. So we've completed that one. And uh, let's take a look at what our typing speed was. You are ready for the next lesson. Your accuracy was 91%. Your typing speed was 18 words per minute. You made 14 errors in this lesson, so your adjusted speed was 16 average words per minute. And again, you can start this over and over again. And um, Road race will you get, you with your again, you get different words. Type let's do one more. I don't want to keep you here for don't too long. To uh, simply because you just don't want to see a guy, a random guy on the internet typing. I mean... 
you don't want to see that. I don't know, maybe you do, but anyways, let's go ahead and give it a try again. And again, all you do to start the game is to just start typing. Uh, and there you go. We completed this one, and let's see what it tells us. Um, you did well. Your accuracy was 94%. Your typing speed was 40 words per minute. You made nine errors. Your adjusted speed was 38 average words per minute. Um, so again, you know, there's a whole bunch of different games in here. I used to play the road race game a lot. Um, Type to Learn also had a road game very similar. Well, it wasn't quite similar. It was a little bit different. Um, you know, your windshield, I think, got dirty or something like that and you know the wipers came on you know each time you typed a sentence correct or something or something like that um, that one was a bit more interesting <laughs> um, actually that one was a little bit more interesting but again I would like to actually put a copy of type to learn on here um, but I just can't find type to learn um, on any of the shareware sites so I've been kind of um, you know frantically looking for a copy because I do want to put it on here because it was fun Okay, I think we'll end there. Um, that's pretty much about it. So again, um, and again, there's different ones on here that you can choose. But let's just quit out of this whole thing. Yes, I want to quit. Bye bye. Uh, so that's basically. Let me get my dock back up here. So come on, you. Know, there you go. So um, that's basically about it. So the clamshell iBook, the clamshell G3. It's a 300 megahertz PowerPC G3 with 192 megs of RAM um, running Puma. Uh, like I said, these things aren't useful for much anymore, but um, you know, productivity and you know, I do have Apple Works on here, so it's good for that. It's good for type to learn, uh, not type to learn, uh, Mavis Beacon. So maybe who knows? Maybe the clamshell iBooks have a new life as the ultimate Mavis Beacon machine. <laughs> I don't know, but. Um, uh, show title, <laughs> The Ultimate Mavis Beacon Machine, but um, I don't know. Um, I just thought it would be cool to kind of show you the clamshell iBook and uh, kind of show you that Mavis Beacon actually runs quite well on these machines. And at the end of the day, we can just go here and just shut her down. And um, so that is that. That is the clamshell iBook and Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing 17. Okay, so that is the video, and I hope you guys really, really enjoyed. Um, again, uh, this is a very classic piece of software. In fact, I think, um, in fact, I think Mavis Beacon is still being developed. I thought I seen somewhere where a uh, where a uh, new version came out, but I'm not 100% certain on that. But uh, it's a fantastic piece of software to learn how to type. Um, I used it when I was in school, um, and uh, of course, with the old clamshell iBook here. Uh, you know the you know the old clamshells may not be useful for much, but uh, they certainly can run Mavis Beacon quite well. Uh, and uh, you know I think it'd make a great typing machine, especially with the way the keyboard's laid out and just you know the way it feels. Uh, you know there's something about the clamshell. You know the way it feels when you rest your hands on the palm rest. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna end the video there. If you liked it, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more from us, hit the uh, subscribe button down below. Uh, new videos from me will be uploaded every Tuesday, and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next week.